All right, let's get this thing going. Um, I think hopefully today will be short, valuable, sweet. Um, I know we went a little bit over last week, so I don't want to repeat that. Um, but you know, we, we did have a lot of requests last week to go through the 30,000 foot, what tool should I be using? Um, which is why we did the, the kind of deal origination rapid fire. So um, today is gonna be more to the point. Um, I'm just gonna give the, the regular intro for our newcomers on, on what this process is about and why it's different and why it's working well in today's environment um, of reduced social interaction. And then I'm just gonna go through um, some very quick, clear tips for how to do the webinar, right? Um, that's something that we've seen working really, really well in this environment. Um, the entire world has opened up to this. Um, I don't see this really going anywhere in the near in the near future. So if you're not leveraging webinars today, or if you're trying to and, and failing miserably, this is probably gonna be a, a good one for you. Um, who am I? Why should you care? I run BN Digital, I run BizNexus. Right. Um, that's that's really it. I don't know if that's enough reason to care, but I've been doing this for for quite some time. Um, started off in the world of cold calls and with the evolution of the Internet really grew into everything that we're doing today, which is social selling and digital sales. And, you know, it's a it's a fascinating industry that's really changing quarter over quarter. And I love staying ahead of it. So um, as long as I'm, I'm here and excited about it, I'm going to be doing it. Um, BizNexus is our platform for auction based deal flow. Um, if you're looking to buy or sell a business, that's what BizNexus is. We're a matching platform and BN Digital is our agency um, that is focused exclusively on proprietary deal origination, off-market deal flow for anybody looking to buy a business or an intermediary looking to get multiple businesses under contract or for buyers looking to do buy side work on behalf of a client, et cetera. That's all we do. We're focused on business acquisition and sale. That's my personal background. That's my team's expertise. Um, that's our that's our wheelhouse. The point of everything that we talk about on these calls, right? Because we cover a lot of different stuff from week to week to week. Um, the point is to build a valuable network of your B two B prospects, of your primary prospects, of your target business owners. If you're, you know, buyout firm or a search funder, and you're looking for a particular type of acquisition, you want to build up a network to leverage all the data that's available um, in this internet world with all the social platforms that we have to really nail your targeting and to go after who exactly your end prospect is and who are those referral prospects who can deliver your end prospects on an ongoing basis. Where are they hanging out, right? If they were hanging out in conventions or conferences pre-COVID, what's the online equivalent? Where are they potentially spending their time? Where can you get in front of them? Where can you, can you initiate the relationship that you would in a conference pre-COVID where you would exchange a business card and have that top of the funnel interaction where you recognize this is somebody who I have something in common with, there's overlap, there's potential for business, let's exchange information and we'll continue the, con the, the conversation and the process of getting to know each other later, right? We're doing that online. And so we want to build up this valuable network of primary prospects, referral prospects, and then stay in touch, right? And stay in touch strategically with messaging that helps define you as a qualified authority in your particular niche, provides social proof, lets that prospect know what you do, how you're offering is a clear fit for their pain points and move them down the funnel to the point of familiarity where when they're ready to have a conversation about an exit plan or business valuation, you're there, you're, you're front and center, you stay top of mind, you're gonna be first in line to, to get that phone call. Um, the end goal of all of this is just that, to get that phone call, right? And that might be a Zoom, it might be a phone call, it might be an in-person meeting, whatever that is, it's to you know, leverage all the tools available online to identify your prospects, nurture your prospects, educate, enlighten your prospects as to what you do and how your value prop fits them, and then get them offline into a real world engagement or into at least a conversation that will lead to a real world engagement, or in the case of referral prospects, possibly multiple real world engagements over the time of your boutique, um, you know, of your firm, of your acquisition search, whatever it is that, that you're doing. Um, that's really the, the change that has taken place over the past six months in this process of deal origination. This had all been happening leading up to COVID and now it's just accelerated. So in terms of automating as much of the top of the funnel, the beginning of that conversation as you can, 
and making sure that the conversation is taking place once your qualified prospect knows more about you and you know more about them, that's the name of the game to make sure that you're, you're not wasting your time and that you're having that interaction towards the end of the get to know you process towards the bottom of the funnel so that you can have a more valuable conversation and it's more likely to convert. So you're not wasting your time, especially if you're a business broker and you're out there dealing with transactions, you don't want to be kind of pursuing a spray and pray you know, phone call, cold call strategy at the top of the funnel. You're, you're never going to get it done. It's, it's not nearly as effective, especially in this environment. Um, the stages of social selling that we talk about, we begin with optimizing your online brand for a conversion, basically making sure that your profile speaks to the pain points of your end prospect. It's not just a regurgitation of your own resume. Um, you know, talking about yourself in third person on your LinkedIn profile, et cetera. Your online brand should be a clear resource for your prospect that you're targeting. Um, when it comes to targeting, who exactly are these prospects? Who are the end prospects? Your primary prospects, your referral prospects get very, very specific so that you don't waste time downstream. Um, building campaigns that are hyper-personalized, right? Your, your campaign should be as personalized as possible. It should go right after your prospect and their pain points. That's what's gonna convert. Nurturing, once you have these great prospects, ideally in your online Rolodex, in your ecosystem, you're staying in touch in deal origination, in business brokerage, in private equity, in business acquisition. If you're in the industry and you've been in the industry, you know that 90% of the people who you approach possibly much, much higher, could be 99%, um, are just not going to be ready for your offering um, on, on first contact, right? Selling your business is a big deal. It's something you've been building for a long time. It's a very high ticket transaction. You're going to have to get in front of these potential sellers. You're going to have to touch them across multiple channels. You're going to have to touch them with messaging that's appropriate for each stage of the, of the conversation to nurture them to that point where, especially if you're in the lower middle market, they're, they're going to be familiar with who you are. They're going to see the social proof. They're going to be comfortable that you are legit, that you are qualified. And then they're going to be able to reach out for you know, that conversation about what their exit options might be. Final stage is capturing, right? So after nurturing, capturing, that's what we're going to be talking about today, primarily with the webinars. But how do you get that relationship into a real world engagement? How do you pull them from your, your online campaigns into you know, the phone call into that personal sales interaction, turn them into a sales qualified prospect. We talk a lot about the deal funnel. I'm not going to go deeply into that um, today, but basically top of the funnel, think, you know, conference, right? Exchanging business card. Um, the online equivalent, what works really well, cold email, LinkedIn, direct mail, telemarketing, those are, are arrows in the quiver, so to speak, that are highly effective in this environment as you move down the funnel into educating, nurturing your prospects, letting them know who you are, what you do, how you're a fit, ongoing social posting on LinkedIn with the strategies and the tactics that we cover in these calls to make sure that it's actually being seen by the right eyeballs. Newsletter, you know, retargeting advertising and warm drips. These are all tools that work really well, middle to bottom of the funnel. At the bottom of the funnel, um, you've got the old-fashioned phone call. You've got a direct email. Um, you know, newsletter should have a clear CTA that provides your prospects with an opportunity to schedule directly in your calendar through something like Calendly or, or another software. Um, or it's just you know, always think with any piece of promotional material, you should have your clear contact info at the bottom so you're giving your prospect an opportunity to reach out directly to convert, right? To capture, to get them to commit to that phone call. The other tool that we're going to be focusing on today, Zoom or webinars. Um, no real updates today. Just stay up on the platform. I'll let you know if there's something big. We're going to have another big product release coming out next week. So maybe I'll, I'll have something for you there. But let's just get on with it and let's get into webinars. Um, why webinars? This is something that we've, we've seen just so much interest in, even with, I mean, when, when COVID first hit, I did a lot of complaining about Zoom and webinar saturation, and um, it's here to stay whether we like it or not, and it's, it's highly valuable. I think a lot of webinars are actually being done uh, much better today than they were three months ago, six months ago. People have gotten the hang of this, and from a prospecting standpoint, it can be invaluable, especially um, at the bottom of the funnel. Um, unfortunately, I think this is something that the majority of 
Um, certainly with business brokers, I think the majority of our clients are, are intermediaries. Um, you know, buyout is, is just getting into this concept, still kind of cold to the webinar and, and the social posting, but this is the world we're in. Um, better to accept it now and get ahead of it than to let your competitors do that and, and begrudgingly adopt this a year from now. Um, so webinars are here to stay. I highly suggest that you engage them as part of your marketing strategy. Um, it gives you an opportunity to personalize your offering, to put a face um, behind your service, um, to really get out there at scale with the type of interaction that you previously you'd only be able to have in a one-on-one sales inter interaction or sales, sales situation. Um, step one that we see people screwing up, if you're gonna have a webinar, set up a proper landing page, right? Um, the, the zoom, the zoom signup page is, is dry, right? This is something that, I mean, maybe we see zoom, I don't know, they, they should have some sort of landing page. They're going to do that themselves or they're going to buy into it at some point, but their, their signup pages simply don't convert. So whatever webinar software you're using, if you don't have a clear landing page, um, that at least educates the, the prospect about what they're getting into, you're not going to get as many signups. So, you know, the, the BN digital site, we have, I mean, this is just a very basic landing page. This is not a great example of a landing page. Um, most of the people who, who get into the lunch and learn, they're already familiar with the BizNexus brand. They're you know, familiar with BN digital. So it's not as important for, for us as it would be for you if you're approaching a cold prospect, but you want to have one page that is clearly dedicated to informing the end prospect on what they're getting into. So for today's lunch and learn, you know, we just talk about every Wednesday, we're gonna give you something actionable. We're gonna take half an hour and try not to waste your time and register now. Um, there is no, on this particular landing page, there's no way out. You can see there's no, no menu, that's, that's intentional. They actually have to go and click the back button if they want to escape. That's just another trick with a landing page. When they click register, this is just kicking out to Zoom. This is not ideal. Ideally, you'll have an integration where they can just very clearly sign up on, on a landing page, but this is much better than just sending them to this, this crap page, right? These things don't convert. So um, keep that in mind. If you can set up a landing page, something that is going to be more educational and user-friendly for somebody who's just you know, finding out about your webinar, I highly suggest that, that you do that. That's step one. Step two, once you have a webinar in place, and this, this lunch and learn is not going to be about what topics you should do, who you should coordinate with, how to do that. It's really just about the strategy for getting attendance, for, for leveraging this, for turning a webinar into that cup of coffee phone call. So just let's put that out there. Um, your interaction before the webinar, you should absolutely be reaching out to your attendees prior to the webinar, you know, sending them personalized invitations, um, you know, who should you be going after to attend your webinar? This is a question that we, we always get. You know, first, obviously your warm contacts, your LinkedIn connections, if you can you know, put together a campaign of reaching out to all of your relevant LinkedIn connections leading up to the, the webinar, that's, that's highly valuable. Um, you know, obviously if you have a newsletter, you know, include the webinar starting you know, bare minimum a month prior to the webinar start promoting that through the newsletter on your website. Um, if you have you know, something like the lead nurturing hub, or you have the analytics where you can see people who have been clicking on your website, spending time on your website, include them, put them into the invitation and um, bring them into your webinar. For cold contacts, if you're looking for people who you know, would be interested, if you have a, a very specific webinar topic, like, um, I don't know, how to, leverage seller financing when you're buying a business, right? So for me, if I was going to do that as a BizNexus webinar targeting buyers, and if I wanted to find cold contacts who aren't already in my LinkedIn or on my newsletter or who I know who have been engaging with my site, I would try to find a LinkedIn post that is about business acquisition. You know, I'd try to find a LinkedIn article that has a good, good following that has, you know, a bunch of likes, bunch of engagements, but the LinkedIn article is specifically about seller financing or about buying a business. I'm going to look for groups about buying a business. I'm going to go on to Quora 
and look for questions, you know, how can I leverage seller financing to buy a business, right? And they're gonna be, there's gonna be a great pool of followers who are specifically interested in that. That's how you find your cold contacts to reach out to. And that's how you actually get conversions when you're doing cold reach out on a webinar. You wanna be hyper-personalized. You wanna make sure that they've already shown interest. Um, I can show, if anyone has follow-up questions, then next week I can go through on, on how to identify the LinkedIn post, the LinkedIn article that's relevant to to your topic, but we've covered that in the past, so I don't want to get get lost and, and do that again here. Um, next step for the webinar, you really want to lead into the attendance, right? So once you have people signing up, once you've put together your program for approaching your warm contacts and your cold contacts, you've got to make sure that they actually attend. Depending on what your goals are, this may or may not matter, right? You can do a webinar with no attendees, slice and dice that, put that video into your marketing program and that can be very effective. But if you are doing a webinar for attendance, you, you've got to be strategic about this. The majority of people who sign up for a webinar just don't attend, right? Um, less than 40%, I think, is, is the, the most recent stat in terms of signups versus attendance, especially in today's environment where there are so many webinars going around, you might sign up for five of these things and you know, maybe attend one. Um, so how do we raise this attendance, right? Asking questions prior to the webinar is a great way to not only raise attendance, but to put you into a position to get the cup of coffee that we're going for at the end of this lunch and learn, right? So if you send a personalized email or a personalized LinkedIn message, basically just asking them, Hey, is there anything you, you want me to, to answer in the webinar Q and a, right? Um, that is very, very valuable. And it gives you a reason to follow up and get the phone call after. So maybe you automate this and you have an email campaign that goes out to every sign up with, you know, first name, hey, you know, are there any any questions you'd like me to answer in the webinar? Or maybe you are able to identify extremely high value prospects and you really do personalize it and you reach out one-on-one -on -one to those high value prospects, not all of them. Um, if they're not in your LinkedIn network, make sure you have a VA or if you have the time, do it yourself or you know, if you're working with us, this is the, the stuff that we do, um, invite them into your LinkedIn network to make sure that they're part of your online Rolodex, to make sure that they're, they're, they're part of your community. So they've lowered their shields, they've accepted to be in your network. Um, and if you're gonna send these emails, always keep it very personalized, casual in the lead up. After you've done the webinar, and this is the, the critical piece, this is why I have a little cup of coffee on, on this slide, this is conversion right? Um, you want to keep in touch with attendees and with the signups, but you know, the, the people who did not attend, but they did sign up. It's critical that you follow up. Um, you want to have a follow-up campaign, you know, whether that's through LinkedIn or through email. And you can really personalize this to whatever your webinar was. So you can ask for feedback, right? With a one-on-one. -on -one. You can say, hey, can we hop on the line? Um, just starting out this webinar thing, I'm trying to get better. Um, would you mind hopping on the line for a 15 minute chat and I can you know, give some feedback. That's a great way to get people on the line. Um, most of them are, are going to respond positively to this because you've taken the time to not only put together the webinar, but to ask them if they have any questions that you can specifically answer in that, in the Q and a, and then you've conducted the webinar and now you're following up with them. They're gonna say, Hey, you know what, this, this is, I'm willing to give you 15 minutes of my time because you've done all of this. For a topic that's relevant to me. Very, very effective in this environment. Um, you can follow up with your attendee list, with your, your sign up list, give them an opportunity to ask any questions directly to you. Um, you can send extra materials and perks. Um, you know, we actually are, are going to start sending you the, the decks for attendees. So for the actual attendees of this lunch and learn, we're going to shoot out the, the decks going forward. This is what I love about these lunch and learns is I get to learn new stuff every week. There's always something where I look at it I'm like, you know what? I've always talked about this and we haven't been executing on this. Let's, let's put this back into the rotation. So we're going to start sending these decks out today to all of our attendees. Um, you know, and then maybe you include a lead magnet. So if you have a, a landing page, like for our clients, we'll make a landing page with some sort of lead magnet, like an exit planning lead magnet, loop that in, follow up with your webinar, send that to them, give them something of value. Um, it's, it's always, always effective. 
with, if you have, depending on the size of your list and the attendance for your webinar, if you have the ability and the time to really separate your big prospects, you know, your high value prospects. So if you're a business broker, if there's somebody who, you know, they've been running a company for 30 years, you know, it's got a, a 50, 50 person head count. That's a lead that you should have flagged. If you're in a CRM, they should be a tier one lead. You should be keeping track of these people one way or another. Once you get to the bottom of the funnel, it's more, I mean, this is where you want to be spending your time at the bottom of the funnel. So if you can do a, a, a clear, you know, one-on-one -on -one phone call, one-on-one -on -one email, something hyper-personalized that is not part of a campaign, I always recommend doing that with your, your valuable prospects for bottom of the funnel type sales tasks like this. Um, very important. Um, last but not least, what platform should you use? This is just a list that's good for, for small business, for small operations. Zoom, um, that's the big winner so far. You have these other ones. Go go to webinar. I've, I've attended. I haven't really used it. Webinar Jam is great. Um, you know, Zoom is is very easy. If if you're just getting into this, try Zoom because everybody else is using it. So you might as well just um, drink the Kool Aid. Uh, but we will be sending out this deck, so you'll have this list. You can link through on all these. Check them out yourself. That's really it for today. Just webinar 101. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, fire away. If not, I'm just going to cut this and we will be sending out our, our survey for feedback. So again, please do, um, if you have any topics, if you have any specific strategies that you'd like to cover, any questions about what tools you want to use, um, just something that you're really frustrated with, with your deal flow process, with your deal origination process, take advantage of the feedback. We are shaping these lunch and learns each week based on not only what we see going wrong in the industry through our agency, BN Digital, but also through your direct feedback. And we want to answer your questions and keep these things valuable. So um, with that, I don't see any questions, um, which is totally fine. We have some, we have a good amount of attendees. We get these questions, we get the, uh, the feedback through that survey, and I'm totally fine with that. So I'll let you all get back to your day. I'll get back to my day and we'll see you next week. Thanks guys.